Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Steph. I'm a junior at Penn State University and these are my pros and cons about attending Penn State. Before we start this video, I just wanna give like a little disclaimer that I am absolutely obsessed with this school, so don't take this video like too harshly. So first off, we're gonna start with the pros of attending Penn State. First off, obviously there's a ton of school spirit. I feel like when you think of Penn State, you think of just like a big rah-rah sports school, everything like that, and that is exactly what it is. I know very few people that go here and absolutely can't stand it and despise it. You always see people wearing Penn State stuff. People are always downtown in the stores buying new merch no matter what year you are and even me I'm from New Jersey and every single time I'm wearing a Penn State sweatshirt someone will say like we are literally Penn Staters are everywhere and Penn Staters love to support other Penn Staters building off of that there's a huge alumni network which is one of the best parts about Penn State because I feel like nowadays networking is key connections are definitely helpful when it comes to getting a job depending on your industry for me especially as a comm major connections are huge and that's one of the big reasons I picked Penn State because we have the largest alumni network in the world not to flex. To kind of wrap up my first point about having a ton of school spirit, we are just a fun school in general. If you want like the stereotypical college experience, this is definitely a school for you. You get frat life, we have good academics, there's sports, you really have everything you could ever want all in one school. And my second pro is that we have phenomenal sports. I kind of touched on this a little bit already, but again, when you think of Penn State, you think of big, huge football stadium, and football is only like one of our main sports. I'd say wrestling is super big here, basketball even. When it's game day at Penn State in the fall, that is probably the most fun time of year, honestly. I feel like every single student is always like tailgating and getting up the crack of dawn to go to the tailgate loft and literally sit there all day and support your favorite team. If you're interested in working in sports, there's so many opportunities to get involved with like working for the sports teams, whether it's football or just Penn State athletics in general, or you can be like a manager for the sports teams. There are so many ways, especially within the College of Com, that you can go about getting involved with the sports teams. The other thing that's one of my favorite parts is that some of the sports are free to watch, which is nice. But I know for football, you obviously have to buy like season passes or tickets which is annoying, I'll kind of touch on that later, but most of the other sports are free. I know basketball, you can buy tickets and hockey as well, but I think field hockey or like soccer or something like that, I'm pretty sure they're free. My third pro is that you actually learn things when you're going to school here. I feel like some schools I've heard from like transfer students, they transfer here and they're like, you actually are like getting valuable information. I think that's something that is honestly good. It's kind of annoying in the moment, like you actually have to like try on your work a little bit, but nonetheless, I again am an ad PR major and I've learned so many valuable skills that I will definitely take with me post-grad. And that's the whole point of college, like you are here to learn. It's not just like you're here to drink and party all day. Building off of this, there is so many different clubs you can get involved in. There's a club or an organization for literally every single person. I've seen some whack clubs. I have an internship where I'm doing social media content like about Penn State life and it literally has opened my eyes to so many different clubs. Like I had no idea we had like a club dodgeball team. Like we have literally so many different things. So if you're not someone who wants to get involved like your stereotypical like sports team or Greek life or something, you will definitely find something to help the school feel smaller. Another pro that might be a little bit subjective is that people here definitely are part of hustle culture, which I think is so nice. For me, I'm definitely someone who gets motivated by seeing other people's endeavors and I feel like so many people here especially within the College of Com and the Smeal College of Business I've seen so many people start businesses which I think is such a cool thing to be like a small business owner while you're also a student I'm gonna give a little shout out to some of my favorite like small businesses and stuff like that and companies that I've seen kind of develop over time first off Alex Blom Create she just graduated but she makes the cutest merch today sports is a big one they're like literally gonna be the next bar school like they're on the up I know our quarterback Sean Clifford who just graduated started like an NIL company which is super cool that's called Limitless and there's just so many other businesses I don't even know about around campus and I think that's so cool to see other students doing things that like I honestly wish I could do. As I mentioned, we have the largest alumni network in the world. I am emailed literally 10 times a day with like different internship opportunities or jobs I can apply to. And I think that is awesome that your college is explicitly sending out things that like that recruiters looking for maybe a Penn State student or like maybe a specific major when they're emailing these job applications or saying like we would love a Penn State intern. That's literally awesome because you already kind of have a leg up just because you go to this university. All that business stuff aside, there's just always things to do here, which I think is so, so nice because you go to school in the middle of nowhere. Let me just tell you, you are never bored here. We have a great downtown area which has like food places and shops and things like that we also just always have different events going on around campus whether it is i don't know like a socializing bonding event hanging outside your dorm room or a sporting event or free insomnia cookies that is one of the big things there's always free stuff there's always free food around campus in case you care about that one of the blessings about college is that you can do whatever you want whenever you want which i think is something that i didn't really like acknowledge like obviously your parents aren't here but like you literally can like if i wanted to I don't know, run a marathon at like four in the morning. I could, like no one's here telling me I can't. I think that is so nice. Another pro about Pepsi is there's so many food options. When I say like the food is good, I'm not really referring to on-campus food, but I will kind of dive into that in case you're, I don't know, curious about that. So we have North, East, South, West, and Pollock. So there's five different parts of campus and all five of those have a dining hall and all five of those also I'm pretty sure have a market. I know that at least four of them do. I'm not really sure about North because I've never been there. It's kind of a 
but fuck nowhere. But the dining hall is your typical buffets, obviously. And then the markets are like a mini Wawa or like a sheet. I used to go there all the time freshman year for snacks and stuff. There's also like little toiletries you might need, like, I don't know, shampoo, conditioner, deodorant. Um, there's fresh fruit and stuff. And I didn't even touch on the hub. The hub has a grilled cheese place. There's a salad bar. There's there's a burrito place. There's a Burger King. There's a Starbucks. There's a bunch of Starbucks around Penn State and Duncan as well. So if you're a coffee addict, that's good. There's so many more food options I'm not even mentioning. So if you're worried you're gonna go hungry here, you are definitely not going to. In case you're wondering about downtown options, we have more casual things like Roots or Fiddlehead, which are like salad places. Um, Snap Pizza is a big one, which is like a build your own pizza type of place. It's not Jersey or New York pizza but it'll do if you want more of a restaurant vibe and you're visiting i would recommend federal tap house or brgr brgr is what it sounds like it's just like a burger joint but it's like more i don't know quote unquote nicer it's not like your typical like five guys for late night eats dp dough and el jefe's are definitely the two top contenders because when you're walking home from the frat or something you're always going to pass jefe's and dp dough on your way home if you live in the dorms or on campus so yeah that's enough about food i'm a little embarrassed that i literally just spent like 10 minutes rambling about food but Moving on, the next pro is that there's so many great study spots around campus. To list off some of my favorite study spots, I feel like freshman year I was always in the library studying. Um, the Willard building is really nice. I'm in the College of Calm, like I've said 35 times. Um, they built like a new media center, but it's like affiliated with the College of Calm. And I go there all the time to study. It's so nice. And it's literally just the most bougie building you could ever step foot in. The BBH building is also really nice. And one of the more underrated options is definitely the study lounges in each dorm. Each dorm, especially in East, they have like super nice like booths and tables that you can do your homework at. So I would definitely take advantage of those as well. The last pro is location and as I mentioned this is kind of a con at the same time because we are in the middle of nowhere but that being said you always have things to do and I never feel like landlocked which is nice and I also just feel safe I feel like that's one of the biggest things when I was touring colleges I went to like the city schools and I was like I cannot walk around here by myself nor would my mother allow me to and she probably doesn't want me to walk alone here at Penn State but I do it anyway and I have never ever felt like oh my god I'm gonna be shot up but I love Penn State because there's like a mix of like an urban and a campus feel it's not urban like you're not going to like Philly like it's nothing like that but you do have some more like urbanization with like the downtown high rises and stuff like that but you do have that campus feel on campus which literally campus downtown like they're like kind of connected campus has like big fields of grass like your typical like nice sidewalks like pretty buildings so that wraps up my pros and now i'm going to touch on some of the cons about penn state as i said i could never wish ill will on the school i'm obsessed with it but if i had to pick out some cons that i think people would want to know before coming here this is what i would say number one the school is obviously humongous there is 40,000 undergrad students and i have no idea what our grad program looks like the campus is pretty big and walks to your classes could be upwards of like 15 to 20 minutes depending on where you live if you're a freshman picking out your dorm i would pick east renovated just because it is like the like freshman only like cool people dorms but if you're worried about like long walks I'd pick like Pollock or like South Renovated because those ones are more like localized. Again, the school is super big, so scheduling is a literal shit show. As a freshman, you're fucked. I'm just, there's no other way to say it. Like, there is so many people trying to get in, like, Psych 100 or English 15 and stuff like that. And, like, there's just simply not enough seats in each class. If you're committed to Penn State, book your orientation as soon as possible so that you can book your classes as soon as possible. The sooner you schedule as a freshman, the better off you'll be because I waited till, like, late July, early August to have my orientation and all my classes were filled up. But on the flip side of this, as you get older, your classes get smaller. My classes right now are, like, honestly, too small for comfort because I'm used to my 400 people lecture halls but now my classes are like probably 25 maybe 30 people in like a busier class but my classes are so small and I really get to build a relationship with my professors but just know as a freshman it gets better your classes are not always going to be 600 people but that can definitely happen talking about professors professors here can definitely be hit or miss I've had good luck with my professors I've only really had like one bad one and like that was my own fault because I never went to class I'm still going to gaslight myself and like pretend it was her fault that my participation grade was bad but besides the fact in the College of Calm the professors are literally so so good but I do have friends and other majors who have literal devils as teachers so definitely when you're scheduling your classes as time goes on check out rate my professor that's a website that is so valuable for all college students no matter what college you decide to go on you type in your college and the professor's name and it'll give them a rating out of like five and if your professor is under I would say honestly three and a half don't take the class it's not worth it because a professor in college can literally give you whatever grade they want. So you definitely want to make sure you're getting the best you can because you don't want a bad professor to be the reason you fail the class, not because like you actually don't know what you're doing. Some professors you can tell are definitely here just for the paycheck and others you think are literally your mom and dad because they are so good. Touching back on housing a little bit, as I said, you want to pick East Renovated because that's like where all the freshmen live. But but if you are put in an unrenovated dorm, it's going to seem like the end of the world at the moment and they are kind of shitty, which is why it's a con. But it's really not the end of the world. So make sure you're investing in good fans. It's only really hot here 
from like August to early November. But there is no AC in the unrenovated dorm, so just make sure you invest in a good fan and some good storage solutions because they don't have like loftable beds in the unrenovated dorms. Another con is that parking here kind of sucks. I feel like at my friend's schools are like, oh, I can just drive to class, this and that. At Penn State, you definitely cannot do that unless you have like a commuter pass. I don't think we have a lot that's just like open for the general public that's like free. I think you have to pay for everything. And if you live downtown, your only on-campus parking option is in lot 43, which is literally as fuck far no matter where you live. So that's not great, but it is an option. And you definitely can park downtown at an apartment and pay like $200 a month, but I don't really think that's worth it personally. When it comes to parking, you don't want to just park and like put on your hazards and like go take an exam at the testing center because that will not work out in your favor. The parking patrol people are, obviously this is their job, but they're assholes. Like they will tow your car over literally nothing. So just make sure that you are smart about where you're parking. The next con is kind of a pro and a con. I love the party life here, but the frat life here is definitely difficult. I'm gonna touch on this in another video. If you look through my channel, you can definitely find the video where I was like screaming about frat life. That being said, um, it's kind of hard to get into parties as a freshman, which I think is something I did not even think about. Like when I came to Penn State, I've always just heard like, when you go to college, be your girl, like you're getting into parties. That's definitely not the case. There is certain frats and stuff that will let you in like no matter what, cause they're like lower tier, quote unquote, which is a disgusting, word I'm even saying that like there's a tier system but you know that's society for you it is hard to get into frat parties if you don't have connections I know now so many frats are banned on campus that like freshman men can rush um first semester for certain frats that are like pretty decent so if you have a guy friend that's a freshman and he's rushing a frat you can use him for an invite keep that in mind if you do want to go to the frats as a freshman Greek life is definitely helpful for that because you want to get like a list of frats you can go to you go to the door and you're like hey I'm in xyz sigma ligma balls and they'll be like okay and then you get in the frat i hate talking about this because it's actually so stupid and like greek life is disgusting but i'm still in it i'm saying that as i'm literally in a sorority but besides the point if you were a guy and you do want to party number one you're not getting in the frat the amount of times i'm walking frat row and i see like gangs of girls with like two or three guys thinking like the ratio will get them in that's just not how it works here guys who are not in frats just are not welcome unless you have a wristband which is like something you get from like a brother in the frat this said there is other options frat parties are not all that go on here there's apartment parties and there's also the den which is like the big like underage bar here that i probably shouldn't be talking about but anyways enough about partying and drinking the next thing i want to mention is that apartment life here is expensive and competitive after freshman year a lot of sophomore juniors and seniors choose to live off campus because they're scarred from the dorm life completely understandable i was as well when it comes to finding an apartment it is very competitive because every Everybody wants to live downtown, but because of that, the prices are through the roof. You pay like New York City prices to be in ass fuck nowhere where there's horse and buggies, besides the point. I would start looking for apartments the second you have like a good gang of friends that you want to live with. I would say in like September, October, you want to start kind of looking for apartments. I would say the latest you want to sign a lease is like early January, but after that, everything downtown is pretty much going to be full if you want like a full unit. If you want just like a bedroom, it might be like a little bit different, but if you want like for your friends want a whole apartment, it's gonna be a little bit difficult. There is cheaper apartment options if you wanna live like, I call it like off off campus. It's like basically like it's not downtown, it's not on campus, it's like a drive away. Those apartments are super, super nice. Like the yard is so nice. It's just, you do have to drive, which is like why it's cheaper. And it's like, it's kind of like not as nice, quote unquote, when you literally have like a big ass townhouse yourself make it make sense another con is that football tickets here are a mess you have to let me know if you go to a big school and football tickets are not like this but at penn state is like you're literally like auctioning off your child to get football tickets you have to wake up super early you have like five computer devices you have to log in like with different ticket master accounts and this is all in the summer so like if you forget about the date like you're actually just done there's not forty thousand football tickets so obviously not everyone can get tickets Another con is that we are in the middle of nowhere. You know, we're in Center County, Pennsylvania. There's some hicks here. It's not the cutest clientele. Like the people that I see at like our local Walmart are not my favorite, but I never feel like landlocked. As I said, there's so much going on here, but it is something to note that we're like a very remote area. So it's kind of hard to get to and from here if you don't have a car. There is buses and stuff that come, but I've heard literal horror stories. Like I will not be stepping foot on those buses ever, but they are an option. The biggest thing I didn't know is that we don't have trains. So like my plan was like, oh my God, I'm gonna go visit my friends at like, XYZ school every weekend and like I would have to take a bus. I ended up visiting very few people just because we don't really have like a means of getting there unless you want to take a bus and sit there for 10 hours and the drive is like a two hour drive because they take the weirdest ways possible. Um, so I ended up not really visiting a lot of my friends which kind of sucks just because we don't have a train system. The last con I have is that the weather is absolute shit for like three quarters of the year. When it is nice here, it is so, so nice. It's stunning, gorgeous. Like I, you won't catch me going to class just because 
I'm gonna spend all my time laying on the lawn tanning. It does get cold here, I would say like mid-November, like right before Thanksgiving break. It's normally when I pull out my like big parka. And then it really doesn't get warm here until like late March, early April. And then by that time, like we're basically going home. But when it is nice here, it is so nice. And when it is cold, it is so cold. So keep that in mind if you don't like cold weather. And yeah, that kind of wraps up my pros and cons about Penn State. If you guys have any questions, once again, you can comment them down below or you can DM me on Instagram at Steph Oliver underscore. Um, I could talk about Penn State for hours, but thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time I pose. Peace.